Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Speaker. New Zealand First supports the bill. We acknowledge the many small but valuable amendments which are made by the bill, which will assist in the better administration of local democracy for the local government elections later this year. And while New Zealand First supports the bill as is, we do not think that the work, however, is finished and that after these elections there will need to be a further review and follow-up legislation, and I will come to that later. But as the bill now is, it is just enough and it is just in time. New Zealand First identifies four major issues with the bill. Firstly, concerning candidate profile statements, Clause 15 inserts new Section 61.2CA, which will require a candidate profile statement to include whether or not the candidate's principal place of residence is in the local government area in question. And that's a desirable provision, Mr Speaker, something which voters ought to be aware of. But this does not preclude a candidate from living outside the area and does not preclude him or her stating what connections he or she has with the area. Living within a local authority area, though a relevant matter for electors to consider, is not always so important. Some people who do live within the area may in fact have been there for a very short time and have not much of a genuine connection with it, while others who live outside the boundaries may have very strong connections with the area. And it's over, of course, to the candidates to emphasise that. The point here is that a few people do stand who live a long way away from the area they're standing in, and so that does need to be transparent. But voters do need to be aware that just living within an area is not necessarily a genuine long-standing connection with it. Mr Speaker, New Zealand First's second uh, area of concern were the several long-needed new provisions concerning anonymous donations. The need for these provisions has been demonstrated by the John Banks issues in relation to his last unsuccessful Auckland uh, mayoralty campaign. And they concentrate on showing the identity of a donor where substantial donations are made. The Government in this bill attempts to address future abuses of the law by improving the rules around donations and especially anonymous donations. But the Government still has a Minister, a person who the vast majority of people in this country consider to have carried out just such an abuse. And the Government has done nothing about that, except of course to maintain the fiction that this Minister has done nothing wrong under the law. The very law, Mr Speaker, which the Government now seeks to improve. So that future people in Mr Banks' position could not get away with what the Government is tacitly conniving with the Mr Banks to get away with currently. The Government has been saved in this only by the failure of the police to bring a prosecution and that is now left to one good citizen to do by way of private prosecution. This is an important issue for transparency and local democracy. And it's such a shame, therefore, that the government will only look to the future as it is with this bill and not the current situation with Mr Banks. And I think that's a great shame. Mr Speaker, the bill does address the matter in which with the John Banks electoral return from 2010 local body elections has highlighted and revealed a gap in the existing legislation, which was allowing candidates to call donations anonymous, which they did or ought to have known were not anonymous donations. Section 103F will say, quote, if any person involved in the administration of the affairs of a candidate in relation to his or her election campaign knows the identity of the donor of an anonymous donation exceeding $1,500, the person must disclose the identity of the donor to the candidate." Unquote. So it will be necessary to prove actual knowledge under this section. And I think that may be difficult, because the section as drafted relies on the term knows the identity of the donor. So the prosecutor will need to prove 
actual knowledge. And that's not always easy. It is, in fact, the same issue which is likely to face the court in cases under the current law. I tried to persuade the Select Committee to add the words, or ought to have known, so that knowledge could then be inferred from the totality of the surrounding circumstances. But unfortunately, the Committee did not agree with me on that. Nevertheless, the new section is an improvement which will help solve the bank's problem, at least until the electorate solves it more comprehensively at the next parliamentary election. Mr Speaker, the bill also provides that in section 103H, an anonymous donation may not exceed $1,500 and says that, quote, if an anonymous donation exceeding $1,500 is received by a candidate in relation to an election campaign, the candidate must, within 20 working days of receiving the donation, pay to the electoral officer responsible for the conduct of the election to which that campaign relates the amount of the donation or its value less, $1,500. And also, and I quote, if an anonymous donation exceeding $1,500 is received by a candidate who is seeking election to more than one office, the candidate must designate one election campaign for election to one office for which the donation will be used. Section uh, 103I provides for offences relating to contravention of section 103H and says, and I quote, a person who enters into an agreement, arrangement or understanding with any other person that has the effect of circumventing section 103H 1 or 2 commits an offence and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding $5,000. New Zealand First firmly supports these new sections. They will solve some of the issues surrounding the bank's uh, situation. Thirdly, Mr Speaker, the bill provides for the postponement of a local election um, which um, many members have expressed concern about, about. The new powers given to the Minister of Local Government to adjourn uh, elections in the case of natural disasters would cover situations such as the earthquake uh, in Christchurch. The bill would now allow the whole election to be postponed by order and council by up to six weeks at the discretion of the Minister. And so I understand the uh, concern which some members have expressed about that. Uh, the section actually says, and I quote from section 70, 73A in subsection 1, quote, the, government, the Governor General may, by order in Council, made in accordance with the section, specify a later date for one or more of the uh, situations which are then listed, Mr Speaker. And I understand the concerns that some have expressed about that when one considers the disgraceful situation which currently prevails in Christchurch with local government having been excessively diminished, especially concerning ECAM. But for the purposes of this bill, subsection 6 of section 73A does say that this can only be done on reasonable grounds. And the, and the uh, section provides for comprehensive provisions about that. And I think, Mr Speaker, that those are quite adequate and remembering that they would be legally enforceable. Fourthly and lastly, Mr Speaker, the bill is very defective in respect of third-party third expenditure, as one member has already mentioned. It leaves a potential gap for third-party campaigners to receive donations and use funds without a candidate's permission or knowledge. That's a complex area. We don't have the time before the next local government election to deal with it now. But, with Mr Speaker, I express the strong expectation that the government will, in the next three years, uh, address that before the 2016 local government elections because it is a very important matter. But overall, the bill is a good one. It deserves support. It is still a work in progress, but New Zealand First will be happy to support it. I call the Honourable Member, Member Alfred.